Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. Yes, this one's for the ladies out there. Before we get started, I wanted to let you all know that I am now on Patreon. If you don't know what that is, it's a way to support your favorite creators. I actually got my first patron yesterday, which was very exciting and unexpected because I haven't even shared it with you all. So I figured why not share it with you all, jump into it, and hopefully it'll help me get more content out for you all and I also want to get a live stream camera, camera, so that would help. My goal with this is that it'll allow me to continue to create great content and really motivate me to be on here. I can't be on here full time just yet. I have other jobs and it takes me away from YouTube, so I would love to be able to focus more on my YouTube and my subscribers because I love you all and appreciate everything that you have done for me. Let's get into the video. Menstrual cycle. If you have an autoimmune disease, you know that with your menstrual cycle, not only do you get your period pains and all that comes with it, but many times we end up flaring. Why is this? And what's going on? With lupus, at least, we know 90% of those diagnosed are women, so it must be something to do with estrogen, right? And a lot of autoimmune disease are predominantly women. First off, I want to say that I am not a menstrual expert or cycle whatever, I don't know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just doing my own research and spewing it out to you. But I make sure that they are good sources. First, with your menstrual cycle, you actually have your period. And during this time is when many people report their highest amount of flares. There was a study done where it shows different diseases like lupus, Sjogren's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and when most of them reported their survey results of having more symptoms. A lot of them said during their actual menstrual cycle, so when they're actually on their period. So this all occurs during the follicular phase. And during this phase, it's usually day one until ovulation. During this time, people have a higher amount of antibodies and immune response. Well. That makes sense, right? You're creating an immune response during this time period. It makes sense that you're having more flares. It's because your body is having an immune response naturally, and in someone with an autoimmune disease, you're already attacking yourself. So, doesn't help. You also have lower estrogen and progesterone during this time. So then there's a small portion where you're ovulating. That small portion, actually, surprisingly, most women don't report flaring. The next phase, hopefully I say this right, is the luteal phase, and this occurs after ovulation. So during this time, your progesterone and estrogen levels are increasing, and inflammatory response is decreasing. So there have been reports of lower flares during this time. This phase usually lasts from day 15, 14 until day 28. So although the positive of not having a higher inflammatory response during this time, the negative is you're at an increased risk of infection. We can't win. And then going back down as you're getting ready to menstruate, your estrogen and progesterone levels are decreasing, going through the whole cycle again. So why does this happen? To reproduce, right? To have the babies. Basically, before you go into the ovulating phase, your body is preparing yourself for getting pregnant, and it wants to make sure that all foreign invaders are cleared and the inflammatory response is naturally set in place to do that. But unfortunately for us, that's not so good, right? We don't want, we're trying to suppress that. We don't want it, we don't want it. Typically, women experience less flares during the ovulation phase, and they also reported that when they're actually pregnant, they don't flare as much or don't have as many symptoms. Interesting, right? And then of course, once baby comes out, sometimes it just revs it all up again. So there's that. What has been your experience with this? I'd love to hear that. How has your menstrual cycle affected you? For me, I always notice that the first couple of days when I start my period. That's usually the worst for me in here wise, in, in the, the uterus area wise, and also body wise. While we're on the topic, I also wanna to touch on birth control. So first, hormonal birth control. This can consist of just progesterone or estrogen or both together. There's all different types. 
And basically what they're saying now is that overall birth control is pretty safe for people with lupus and other diseases you'd have to check with your doctor. I am only the expert on the lupus part. Um, I'm not even an expert, ask your doctor. <laughs> but generally speaking, you can even see that on LFA's website, they say that they are safe, unless you have a blood clotting disorder. So in that case, you wanna be careful and make sure that this type of birth control is right for you. Birth control overall is pretty important if you are on immunosuppressant drugs. A lot of these drugs can cause birth defects and many other problems if you do happen to get pregnant, and you wanna be careful of that. The last thing I wanna talk about is an IUD. IUD is a copper-containing intrauterine device, and this is a type of method that can, I think it can or cannot include hormones. This is another contraceptive method that is said to be safe for those with autoimmune diseases, and you don't have to really worry about the blood clotting factor as much. Unless you have a really serious one, the actual insertion part could be difficult. Discuss it with your doctor and your gyne gynecologist and see what is best for you. The biggest thing with this one is risk of infection, so again, check with your doctor. What type of birth control do you use? I will share with you all. I use a low, low estrogen because I don't wanna have too much estrogen. I don't know how much it affects me because I've been on it for quite a few years, but it seems to work in regulating my period and keeping me from not exploding. All right, that is all for this video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and get notified. Share this video with your friends or anyone you think it may be helpful with. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I'm excited to try this out and get this thing going. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.